Hello again everyone, so now we're going to move on to the next chapter of The Boy at the Back of the Class, which is chapter 12, Sirrah and the Sea. When we all got to school that first Monday of the second term, it turned out that nearly everyone had heard of Armut's story. It spread over the holiday more quickly than news of a new flavoured pack of crisps. And just as quickly as he had become famous for being the boy that had beaten Brendan the bully, Armut became famous for being the refugee boy. I don't think anyone kept their promise to Mrs Tarn of not asking him any questions, because everyone in class tried to sneak in at least one whenever they talked to him. Even Josie and Michael and Tom couldn't help themselves and started to ask him things like, uh, did you have cheese sandwiches in Syria? Or... What was the weather like in Greece? Or did you ever eat snails and frogs in France? I don't think Armit minded because we were his friends. If he understood the question, he would just answer yes or no. And if he didn't understand, he would just stare at us or shrug. But there were lots of people he didn't know asking him lots of questions too. Some of them asked so many questions in one go that even we couldn't understand what they were saying. And we could speak English. Some classes even began to send messengers to see if they could find anything out. Messengers are usually the smallest kids in the class and are paid in sweets or football stickers or extra lunch tokens to get information. Some of them are okay and leave you alone if you tell them that you don't want to say anything, but the ones that work for the school bullies are especially annoying. It's not their fault really, because they get beaten up if they go back without nothing, uh, with nothing new to tell. But sometimes they won't listen to you even if you've already given them an answer. The most annoying messenger in the stall is Victor. Victor's extra stinny, even though he eats chips every day and has a gold earring in his ear. He works for two upper stall bullies whose names I don't know, but who always hang around the lower boys' toilets and shake anyone that goes in until everything falls out of their pockets. But he also works for a group of girls who always stand around the water fountain, so you never really know who he's messagering for. After everyone had found out Armit was a refugee, Victor followed us around for nearly a whole week. At break times, at lunch times, and even at home times, he would suddenly appear and ask lots of questions that e even I found strange. Like, where did you get your shoes from? And, are you scared of fireworks? And, can you make a tent from a, t from a shirt? And, are you really nine or are you secretly older? He got so annoying that even the break duty teachers began to notice and tell him to leave Armit alone except Mr Irons. He was the only teacher who didn't say anything. After he, to he got told off by Mrs Sanders and Miss Hemsey one break, Victor stayed away, but his questions stayed with us. Sometimes words hang around longer than people, even when you don't want them to. And whenever I was on my own, or just with Tom and Josie and Michael, Victor's questions would pop up into my head and make me wonder what they meant. The only thing that was even more annoying than the messengers was Brendan the Bully. Because instead of being nicer to Armit after seeing his pictures and hearing his story, Brendan the Bully became even more horrible. He seemed to have forgotten that Armit could turn into a lion and punch him hundreds of times, because he began to whisper, Oi, smelly refugee bad, whenever he saw him. And in class, he would even throw spitballs whenever Mrs Tarn or Miss Hemsey weren't looking. When we told Armit to tell Mrs. Tarn or Miss, Mr. S uh, Mrs. Saunders about it, he shook his head and said, I not scared. Lots of badder people in camps. My dad say I fight them, so I fight him. When Armit said this, I thought he was very brave. So, on Halloween, I brought in one of my favourite Tintin books for him to look at, because in it, Tintin stays and fights lots of bad guys, even though the bad guys are bigger and there are lots more of them. There are always lots more of them. See? You! You're like this! See? I said, show him, uh, showing him the book. I was dressed as a vampire and Armit was dressed like a green monster, although Tom said it was the Hulk. We were sitting in the playground on our own because Tom and Josie and Michael were still eating their lunch and taking too long. Tintin! He cried out when he saw the cover. You know Tintin? I asked, surprised. I hadn't thought about it before, but I guess Tintin really is famous everywhere. Yes, said Armit. I read all time. My dad, he read them to me. 
I nodded, remembering the voices my dad used to make when he read, comets, read the comets to me too. After a while, I said, I have all of them. You can see them if you like. I keep this? asked Armit. Oh, I said. I hadn't really meant to give him the book. I had only wanted, it to, uh, wanted to show it to him. But I knew I could ask Mum to find me another old copy in the library and save it for me when, I was, uh, when, it, uh, when it was about to be thrown away. So I shrugged and said, sure. Armit gave me a big smile and started to flip through it. He stopped at a page and pointed out Captain Haddock. My dad, he had this, he said, moving his finger so it pointed to Captain Haddock's beard. You? I shook my head. No, my dad didn't have a beard, but also, my dad, he's dead. Armit nodded sadly and looked down at the picture. I not know where is dad. Maybe he dead too. I looked over at Armit. He's not here in London, I asked. Armit shook his head. I come here. My dad, he behind. I frowned. Behind? Where? Armit shrugged and looked down at the comic book. Maybe he in France. Oh, I said, feeling sad for him. I'd hate it if I didn't know where my dad was or if I or if he was still alive. I wanted to ask who the lady in the red staff was, and whether she could help him find his dad, and where his mum and sister and his cat were, but then Armit flipped to another page and held it up to me. He was pointing to a picture. In it, Tintin and Captain Haddock and Snowy and a man with an eye patch were all standing on a raft in the middle of the ocean, and Captain Haddock was waving a flag that, that had been made out of his blue jumper. See, said Armit quietly. I nodded. I have sister, he said. She there now. You mean here? I asked, pointing to the raft. No, said Armit. Here, he pointed to the ocean. And then I understood. Oh, I said. I felt strange as if something had just hit me inside of my chest. It was the same feeling I had in the hospital when Mum and Uncle Lenny told me that Dad had died. Y you mean your sister? Her name's Syrah, said Armit. Syrah. She is in the sea. Armit nodded and rubbed his eyes. Then she's not with your cat, I asked quietly. Armit shook his head. Cat dead. In the mountains. And then, flicking to another page, he pointed to a tent and said, Mum's sick. Last time I see her. Oh, I said. I wanted to cry. But Armit wasn't, wasn't crying, so I didn't think I should either. Instead, I stared at the picture he was pointing to, just as hard as I could, so that he couldn't see my eyes. We didn't say anything else after that, because a few seconds later, Michael and Josie came out and joined us. Tom was still inside because it was chocolate pudding day, and he always tried to get an extra piece after everyone else had left. I wanted to see if Armit would show them the pictures and tell them about Syrah and the sea and his mum too. But he didn't. And when he looked at me and shook his head, I knew he wanted me to keep it a secret. I nodded back and made a silent promise to Armit that I wouldn't tell anyone. But I didn't know that I would be forced to break my promise the very next day. Because that was when I heard something. And it was a something so scary that it changed everything. Okay, so that was chapter 12 of The Boy at the Back of the Class. A very sad ending to the chapter. I'm feeling quite sad in the blue zone about reading that. Uh, but hopefully things will pick up in the next chapter. <laughs>